Hello everybody, you're on Mind Your Biz, and we have the author Nassim Odin. He wrote this great book called The Sphere of Destiny Trilogy. That's three people, in case you don't know. Nassim, welcome. Hi, Ivan. Thank you for having me here. Great to talk to you. Excellent. I, I love, you know, breakout authors. It takes a lot of guts. I mean, you have a pretty extensive background. I mean, tell everybody a little bit of what you do. You're an engineer. I mean, what's your life experience? Pretty different than, than being an author. <laughs> uh, yes, actually, I am uh, an engineer and I have a PhD degree in engineering and I'm an academician for the last uh, 20 years. Huh? So I, during the COVID time, I found some time and uh, I was was in a lockdown at home and I was browsing on the internet and I found some books on the sci-fi trilogies. So I got excited and started reading the books and, and then I th thought that why not I write something. And then uh, I had some ideas about uh, my own story, which I thought that I would write once I get retired. But then I thought that maybe it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> so COVID put you into early retirement. Exactly. <laughs> so I started writing it and it took me like a, uh, almost like a one and a half year to complete it, uh, the three books and the completed stories. So now the last book, uh, the third book uh, of Trilogy is released on the 10th of February. Wow. So you, th you wrote all three books within a couple of years? Uh, one and a half year. Wow. How long did it take you to upload it when you finish your first book? How long did it take to really get it on Amazon where people can see it? A few days? A week? I think it took me a month because I had uh, done proofreading uh, with uh, two, three people. And then I had uh, some beta readers. Uh, they suggested few changes. And then I uploaded the text. Uh, uh, for, I, I formatted myself. Formatting is done by myself. So it took me like almost like a one month, roughly. So about a month. And now would you say after having some experience, how long did it take you to get it, the third book online? Was it a shorter period of time? Oh, that was actually like, a, you say that 10 days. I, once it got done, I just uploaded it within 10 days. Yeah. Okay, so, so you got it down. You got the time period down. So how did you come up with the pricing for the book? Because a lot of people out there that want to get into this and, and write a book and sell a book. How did you price your book and how did you come to that price? Well, actually, when I started writing the book, I had no idea what, what price level the book should have. And then I was asked, started asking questions to different people and they also don't have any idea. So I started looking into Amazon and seeing that what are the price range of the sci-fi books. And normally they lies uh, in the bulk figure of the 12 plus and minus uh, I mean in the in terms of the uh, in terms of the Kindle and if you talk about the paperback uh, sorry in terms of the paperback it's like 12 plus and minus so some people are 14 the highest like 16 and something like that and where's yours price at uh, my one is around uh, 14 14.99 something so each book is about 14 dollars and change there's a thing. When I uploaded the book on the Amazon, Amazon actually also calculated itself the cost of the book. And it gives you a range that your book should be higher than that. So you have to re-evaluate re your pricing once you upload the book on Amazon. So if you price it at about 14 and Amazon is suggesting that price point, and if you're not selling the amount of books you really want to sell, why not charge less? especially since it's your breakout book. Why not charge $9.99 just to get more readers and more readers to refer it? Actually, the pricing can be controlled in the Kindle edition because Kindle does not require the paper. But when it comes to the paper back, uh, Amazon has to cover the cost of the paper and the printing and everything. So you can reduce the cost of the Kindle side, Kindle side versions. So some people sell their books on the order of $3 also. 
And but my Kindle book is like uh, something like five ninety nine, five point nine nine. Uh, okay. Kindle book is five point nine nine. And are, are you happy with the results of the amount of people that have purchased your book or purchased the Kindle? Or do you feel you need more help marketing it and getting pe more people to, to know it exists? Uh, well, actually, uh, I'm a new author and I'm out of USA. I need to breach into the market. So I need a lot of people to know me and that's why I'm here. <laughs> okay. to promote myself. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I'm wondering, a, you did a trilogy. It, it's three books. Is, it, is the second book a continuation of the first book and, and the third a continuation of the second? Exactly. Exactly. A story, a story arc is going through all three books. So I'm going to give you some advice, all right? And I tell everybody, take it or leave it, right? Uh, <laughs> most people take it. <laughs> so you're a new author. You wrote three books, right? So in business, when you open a new store, when you open a new restaurant, when you open a new, have a new product, you typically have to give away something generally to get people to get to know you and not be afraid to try something without losing money, right? So if I can make a suggestion right off the bat, you already have three books. So you definitely have a way to recoup your money if you essentially give away the first book. I know it's your baby, but sometimes you got to give. I mean, one of the biggest uh, successful giveaways is Groupon. And Groupon essentially is giving away free products and services for a company that wants to stimulate their business. Like I said, if this was your only book, it might be a little more, more hesitant to give it away. But you have two more. And the beauty of that, even more so, is that they're a continuation. So if you get people in the door for the first book, even if you give it away, and it really is good, they're definitely going to buy the second and third book. Guaranteed. If they like the first one. Okay, that's a good idea. Actually, I didn't know about it. Uh, but I tried uh, Goodreads uh, giveaway. Give it away. Yeah. So I just give like um, 100 copies of my first book. Uh, but at that time, the book was not released. Um, I don't know whether they would like it or not <laughs> because uh, I didn't have their email addresses. So I don't really have an idea. Okay. And do you also have a website dedicated to your books? Yes. Okay. Do you offer on your website a way for your audience to interact, ask questions, you know, that, that you can elaborate and answer. Do you have a way that they can easily contact you and even put on a, a running blog so other fans of the book can interact and almost have a blog going that's interactive with you and your audience? Do you have that? Mm, actually, I don't have it. I just so uploaded I my, a few of my interviews. And uh, I guess uh, it's a good idea to write a blog and put the first book as a giveaway and see how the people would react to it. Right, because you want to get everybody's raw opinion of it. Good or bad, you want opinions and you want people talking about it. And the beauty of a blog, not only are you able to see their reactions and interact, but it actually goes into your SEO, your search engine optimization. So if they're talking about your book and let's say they write something that you know it, it reminds them of something in whatever star trek let's say uh or any kind of sci-fi more popular they say oh there's something in here that reminds me and they mention something that's more popular than your book now that goes on google and now google might pick up you know sci-fi book star trek and google starts to put it together and it actually starts to reach out to fans and an audience that you never can reach out to. So this is a big part of marketing your book is the website, the blog, getting people's reaction, uh, getting reactions on a daily, weekly basis, because that stimulates your online presence with your SEO, your search engine, engine optimization. So this is a key to marketing your book and you have to 
go down every avenue to market this book. And I'm telling you right off the bat, got to get that blog that's in people's face on the website. Even one person starts to talk, then you get another person. It creates, it creates a buzz in a sense. And that's what you need. You need a buzz um, on your website. That's the home of your book. That's the home of you. You want them to interact with you and you always want to be on there to add your comments to it. You know, maybe you can help them understand something a little bit more. So this is all a part of marketing. And um, Amazon is basically a huge store with millions of books and products. So you're, you, you're not going to be found in there generally. It's very hard to be found in there. So you really have to do all of your marketing outside of Amazon. You do it on your website, you do it on your social medias, and then you have to physically get into forums and talk about your book. You have to be on the Reddits, you have to be on your social medias, in, in, in forums that revolve around your fans. So you got to go out and find your audience and you got to let them know that you exist. All right. You have to actively, you know, this is a good step, obviously getting interviewed on different platforms that have an audience, but you have to also go after your target audience. It's a lot of work, right? You may even want to pay someone or have family be an extension of you and join other sci-fi forums talking about books, get into book clubs that are in your genre. So now you can say, Hey, you know, you read the same book as everybody else, but you know what? Check this book out. And then you mention yours, you know? So you have to, you know, almost have to be like a spy and discreetly navigate in, in these circles. Mm -hmm. I got what you, what you mean, but Actually, I was uh, quite possessive about my <laughs> my books, <laughs> so I I had a fear that my books will be sold, uh, like uh, uh, somebody might sell my book, huh? Isn't it? Don't ever be afraid. Don't ever be afraid. A lot of times, we have to give away a lot in order to get exposure and get people talking about you. And the beauty of this is you you already you have two other books, so. Just consider the first one as a giveaway, as a sample. You're giving them a little taste of that great, you know, you're giving them an appetizer, but now they're going to have to pay for the entree and dessert once they like your appetizer. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a good, it sounds like a good idea. And since you are in a, in a business world, maybe that should work. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and a lot of entrepreneurs like yourself, because I consider you an entrepreneur now, you made a book, you're selling a book. They're always afraid someone's going to steal something, take something. They're afraid they're not going to capitalize. And what they're really doing is they're just sitting back and they're not unleashing their product and they're losing an audience. You want buzz. I mean, even if they stole all your first books, all your second books, you know what? You got a third book. And you know what, if they stole that and you built this great big audience, I'm sure you could probably write a fourth book or write a prequel to the first book if you had to. So never be afraid of exposure because you might gain a ton of exposure, but maybe you would have never have gained any exposure if, if you held back. So never be afraid. And that goes for a lot of different art, not just books, but a lot of musicians and music artists, they hold back their music. They're afraid someone's going to steal it or take their idea. And it just stays inside of their world. and never gets out. Give it away. Give them a taste. You know, when people open a new, a new restaurant, they, they're outside giving away food. Come in. I'll give you a 50% discount. You want them to get to know you at any cost. Any cost. So you mentioned the platforms like my website and Reddit and what else? Uh, what other uh, could be the options? You, you have to go deep dive into what's the most popular blogs for sci-fi books, right? And you want to get in to all of these groups and, and hear what they're saying and then find a way to promote your book without being, you know, without forcing it down their throat. 
or without seeming like a salesperson, like, hey, uh, I know you guys like sci-fi. Buy this book I got. You don't want to do that. You want to interact naturally with the forum. And then when you see an opportunity, when someone asks, hey, can anyone recommend a good sci-fi book? Or when you see they mention a genre that's similar to yours, that's your opportunity. And now you're not selling it. You're just being a natural part of the conversation. And that's the art of selling, is you never seem like you're selling, right? So you want to enter yourself into forums that have your audience. You know your audience. You have to know your audience. You have to know your client. So once you know your client, you got to figure out where they hang out. Where do they, you know, where do they interact? And that's, there's tons of blogs. I can't tell you the exact ones, but I'm sure if you Google sci-fi book clubs and sci-fi book blogs, I'm sure there's a hundred of them. And you'd want to try to be efficient because you don't have time. You have, you have to make a living too. So that's why it's important to be efficient, hit the top blogs, get help from either your family, your friends, hire somebody part-time, maybe offer them commission and let them help you out. Let them get, be an extension of you because it's really hard to open a business by yourself. And that's what you did. You opened a business by yourself. You need help. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so some other alternative ways to market a book is to come up with animations. Now I'm not telling you to spend thousands of making this big cartoon, but maybe make a short animation. That's kind of an explainer of your book and put that on YouTube. That again, that's a teaser. You know, you give them the premise. Maybe you do one of the scenes in your book. Uh, you pay an animator. You know, you can go on plenty of websites, uh, Upwork, I think Fiverr, and they can do a basic animation. So now you're marketing your book in a different way, right? With animation, with a video, with an explainer. So now people can, can see it, you know, have a taste of your book on a different platform. Yeah. Actually, I uploaded uh, uh, my audiobook chapters uh, on the YouTube. Okay, the audio. Yeah, audio. All right, well, YouTube is very visual. If you have confidence in your book, spend a few hundred bucks to get a visual explainer. And someone can, and you don't have to create it. There's some real great creatives out there. They can kind of get a, a gist of the synopsis of your book, look at the cover, and they can come up with something. And it's affordable. You'd be surprised. It may only cost you 200 bucks. Great, great, great. Yeah, it's a good idea. I'm a bounce board here. I can help you as much as you want. You know, just ask any questions, fire away. I want you to succeed. So, uh, actually, I want to go into the movie side of the of the so people how the people go into the Netflix and uh, the Hollywood. Okay, so you'd like to sell this as a movie? Yeah, the best way the best way is to work with a script writer because you have to convert your book to a script. It's very hard unless you're a best-selling book. You know, if it's a best-selling book, they, they'll pretty much take your book and make it a film, right? But right now you don't have a best-selling book. So I would suggest making a short script, work with a script writer. You might have to pay them. Or if you think they're really good, bring them in as a partner. Give them a percentage. And if somebody picks up your book, options your book, great. Now you went right to the movies. That was going to be one of my questions for you if you had an intention to try to make this into a film and you're already on it. So that's great. You're already thinking long term and bigger. <laughs> yeah. So basically, basically, I got some ideas from you and I can see them. So my question is, am I the first author you are interviewing? Uh, have you interviewed? You're not. Yeah, I, I've interviewed other authors. And the new authors seem to have the same challenges, you know, and, you know, they, they have so much passion in what they wrote and they publish it themselves on Amazon, but they're really not doing the work of marketing outside of Amazon. And that's crucial. You know, you're a little grain of sand in a big beach of Amazon. You know, you're a little tiny weed in a big Amazon jungle. No one's going to see you there. 
No one's going to find you. So you have to find your audience. You have to find your customer. And that requires some legwork. It requires real networking and digital, you know, obviously digital networking. And what do you see in the future of the Facebook marketing? Do you see is, is it really working or not? Anything and everything can work, right? But it's, a, it's about how much are you willing to spend? Is it worth it? So I always tell people, test the waters. Spend a little money on the digital marketing, organic you know, promotions on, on Facebook and Instagram. Give it a shot. But you know, a lot of people that have great success that way, they're spending a lot of money there. Or they hit the lotto and got lucky. And, and you can't count on lotto, you know, but test the waters. I, I fear that a lot of people overspend sometimes and don't get the results back because they're not doing it efficiently or effectively. So give it a shot, you know, do some Facebook ads, do some Instagram ads. Uh, I'm not opposed to that, but don't spend a lot and test it, you know, see if it really gets you some results. And that goes for everything, right? Test it, put some money into it. And, you know, if you put $5 in and you get $10 back, try doing $20. See if you get $40 back, you know, test it, but make sure it's making sense. Don't just burn up your money. Mm -hmm. I understand. So it's like a gamble and see <laughs> if it is working. It's less gambling when you're, when you're doing things, when you're really around your audience. And like I said, the blogs book clubs, you know, get into these places, infiltrate, and you'll be surrounded by your audience. And then you got to be very creative on how you can mention your book. Uh, what do you see about the TikTok marketing? Any, any, any ideas I mean, that? I'm all for every kind of marketing. TikTok is so popular. And I think you got to be everywhere, right? Do a video, have somebody put on a costume and mention, you know, the, the, I'm a character from the book, you know, get creative, have one of your kids do it. <laughs> you got to be everywhere today. And you never know where you, you know, you might find that the audience in TikTok grabs it and they find it silly, but it brings you attention. You never know. You got to try everything. <laughs> you know, you got to try it. <laughs> well, it sounds interesting. <laughs> You got to be in it to win it. If you're not in it, you, you don't have a shot, right? So you, you got to go on every, as many platforms as you can. Great, great. I mean, those are the, the best ideas that I can think of for authors. And obviously, if I think of anything else or another author comes on and has like a great idea that worked for them, I'll always reach out to you. I want everyone to succeed. And I, and, and I always appreciate people with a startup. And this to me is a startup. You know, you're an author, but this is a business too. You put time in and there's a value to that. So yeah, if we get any great ideas from other authors, we'll, we'll shoot you an email. We'll, we'll call you. We'll, we want you to succeed. Great. Great. Thank you for that. <laughs> you're welcome. So let's mention the name of your book so they, they can check it out. Is it under your full name, Nassim Odom? Is it under the book name? What's the easiest way they can find this book and, and the trilogy? called the sphere trilogy and if they search on uh, amazon the first book is called the sphere of uh, destiny the second one is called the cure for stars and the third one is called the revenge of hatatar the revenge okay of hatatar. well that's that's a mouthful so the easiest way to find all three is the sphere of trilogy the sphere trilogy the sphere the sphere trilogy yes all right. Well, that's way easier. And all three books would, would pretty much come up under that. So exactly. So my last name, uh, my pen name actually is Odin, O-D-I-N. O-D-I-N. Yeah, O-D-I-N. And they just put the, the Sphere Trilogy on Amazon, then this should come up. Well, Nassim, I wish you a whole lot of luck. I appreciate your courage. I really want you to work on marketing that book. And always feel free to reach out to us. Uh, I'm here. I'm a bounce board for you. Thanks, Ivan. It's a great idea. I never tried actually giving free, giving totally free my, my book, for first book. Give him a taste. <laughs> Maybe I should try that out.
and see how it goes. <laughs> Absolutely. And, let, and get back to us. I want to know if any of these tactics work so I can now pass it on to other authors. Yeah, sure. Sure. All right. Pleasure talking with you. And thank you for letting us mind your biz.